Welcome to Vinyl or Die. My name is Michael. We're going to be reviewing an album today. Uh, it's actually an EP. It's by one of my favorite artists, Israel Nash. Uh, it's called Topaz. Uh, the reason I chose this particular uh, piece of music is I think it's a great introductory um, album or EP to get into his music. Um, I'm a big fan of Israel Nash and most of the stuff that he's done. One of the reasons I like him so much, I think he's uh, kind of represents a, a modern style of artist, while his uh, musical style uh, sounds very throwback. You can get a lot of Neil Young out of it, just uh, to name one influence that's pretty obvious. But uh, he works with a lot of artists that are more modern, and he's also expressed some interest in um, other artists that I feel is interesting for somebody that produces the sound that he does. Um, he talks about Radiohead. Um, he enlisted Steve Shelley from Sonic Youth to co-produce his first record and play drums. Uh, one of his current band members is from a band called Midlake. And uh, on this EP, Topaz, he has Adrian Casada co-producing and playing guitar on it a little bit as well. And if you don't know, Adrian Casada is with Black Pumas, who are a super hot Austin band right now. So. Um, as far as the EP goes, I think it's solid pretty much all the way through. There's a couple songs that maybe aren't my favorite. Uh, Canyon Heart, I think, is a great song. Um, Down in the Country, nice song about rural communities in uh, America and how they're kind of losing their grip uh, because of political and economic uh, agendas across the country. Um, and then Dividing Lines, I think, is a really nice kind of closer. It's very mellow. It has some elements of like early Pink Floyd in it. So there's like a psychedelic um, element to some of his music. Mr. Bradley? Uh, yeah, thanks for saying everything about the record already. No, <laughs> no it's great. Uh, I really like, I like this guy. You and I have seen him before. Um, I did see an interview with him once and what I was shocked to find, I couldn't find anything about this, but I believe in the interview, he had said that he had a, a master's degree or maybe even a PhD from the university. And one of the reasons why is he was getting free education um, on scholarships and start, trying to start his music career. So the longer he stayed in school, the longer he could kind of be unemployed and focus on his music career. When he finally ran out of degrees to get, he moves up to New York, forms his band and quits playing his local stuff and has just come out with some really cool stuff that's really evolved over time. Um, so I like him and he does sound like a, like a younger, hipper, um, more swirly sounding Neil Young a lot of the times. And that's kind of what I expect, but I think like dividing lines, um, and down in the country has got a real cool different rhythm for him. So I kind of, that, that one stands out to me, but, uh, other than that, you know, just, it's great music just to have on while you're kicking around the house and doing stuff. I don't really get too much into trying to figure out what he's trying to say or any metaphorical stuff. I just like the way it sounds. I think it's great for driving through the country or driving through Colorado. Very nice. <laughs> All right, Mr. Lutz. You're up, Greenhead. Yeah, uh, How much time do we have? <laughs> uh, we have 6.05. Oh, we have plenty of time. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I mean, this record is beautiful. You know, I mean, it's, I love his voice. I love, you know, the Neil Young, of course, you can't, I mean, the influence is there. It's, it seems pretty obvious to me. Um, when the horns come in on a couple of the songs, I'm, I'm way into that. It's like gives you that sort of like R&B kind of, kind, of, kind of feel mixed with kind of the, the Texas alt country kind of thing, which, which I think is really cool. Um, I read that this guy uh, rushed this release out because of COVID. And he just was, you know, wanting to give people a little bit of something to, to listen to and, and pass the time. And also something that was maybe a little bit more, uh, you know, of a, of a, it's not necessarily a feel good thing, but like, you know, a, a positivity, you know, something, something cool um, to listen to. So I really, I liked that, that aspect of it. Um, the, the first track, Canyon Heart, I, I really like a lot. I really like Down in the Country. That the last song, Dividing Lines, is probably my favorite one. That's that just gives you that 70s vibe 
that's I just think that's such a cool song. It reminds me of like a bunch of artists, and I can't name them because because they're from the seventies. But it's 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 really cool, you know. He, he's his voice, like the when he goes into the higher, you know, um, range of his voice is is really good, you know. So yeah, I'm I, I dig it. I'm I'm way into this thing. It's cool. Why don't we it's listen a, to some dividing lines? It's a pretty slick record for something that uh, was rushed. Yeah, I want to yeah. see him with the big orchestra and all these people playing at the same time, like that big giant band. You know, I think from the time we saw him, he had just a couple of extra dudes. Oh, does he play with a big band? No, I'd love to see him play with a big band. Where I think the time we saw him, he had a guy playing keys and a guy playing some lap steel and switching between guitars. But I'd love to see it with the horns and you know backup singing and all that cool stuff. I think it'd be real cool to do. What what does this remind you guys of here? This this is this listen this sounds like something from the seventies that I can't quite put. This like. reminds me of some early like animals. Wish you were here, uh, Lloyd. Take it yeah, this does have just some, a little uh, bit. Yeah. Don't you know it's yeah. driving me crazy? And then this part gets all soulful. Yeah, I think he kind of reminds me of that Jonathan Wilson movie. Oh, yeah, 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 for sure. They're very similar. Jonathan Wilson's a little bit more out there, but still, yeah. same, same kind of thing. You don't know what to expect, you know. They don't always, they don't stick to that same song formula. They, they mix it up and they go different places. I, I, I didn't know these. this guy played with the Mid Lake people. Those guys are awesome. Mid Lake, uh, a couple of their records are fantastic. Have one member from Mid Lake in his band. Man, uh, yeah, good stuff. All right. It does. I, I do hear a lot of Pink Floyd now that you mentioned it. I probably would have never even thought of that. That's why you have me around. Right. <laughs> so we got have each other around. We got two and a half minutes. You guys want to hear two another track? Two and a half track? minutes. Yeah, I know. It goes down. Huh? It goes down. Yeah. What do you want to hear, yeah. Michael? Um, let's do uh, we didn't talk about that one, so let's listen to it. So what do you guys think? Vinyl or die? I vinyl it, yeah. Uh, I I would vinyl it, yeah. I I think I would pick this up at my record store and take it home with me. Yeah, I agree. Well, no, I mean, if I had to choose out of his uh, catalog, I don't know if this would be the first one, but definitely. You don't have all the other ones already? Uh, I have the, uh, the uh, Rain's Plane. Yeah. Lift it. I have to lift it on my own. All right. All right. Three vinyls. Three vinyls. You need like a, like a graphic that goes up three vinyl records what did we we got two out of three for four of these mark and i vinyl did and michael was uh oh that's right michael gave it a half a vinyl <laughs> <laughs> I, I said uh re record it on cassette at your friend's house no, i'm just kidding yeah, exactly perfect yeah <laughs> no like, i actually got it on vinyl i like going over there and listening to it i actually kind of there was a there was a quirky song playing in the background today while I was doing some work, and I heard the song and I didn't recognize it at first. And I was like, this song sounds pretty good. And I was like, wait a second, this is quirky. And it was a song that we didn't talk about. I don't remember which one it was. It was like Desiree or Dee Dee. Uh, it's all about timing. This is a cool song. I'm going to go down to the one that I think is the sort of the centerpiece of this record, Down in the Country. This is yeah. down in the country that when I the article that I read about this guy said that he wrote this song first and trying to make that commentary about like sort of the struggling smaller communities and then I think the, the record came in came into uh, the place after this. We have ten seconds. Guys, what's our next record gonna be, Mark? Oh, what did I pick? Oh, Jesse Moe and the, uh, the, the Sunset Kids. All right, that's it, guys. That's 10 minutes. That's the brush All right, perfect. Say goodbye. Bye.